Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, February is the traditional time of year to help farmers grow their crops by getting on top of those pesky pigeons. Fire up a Polaris. We're in the West Midlands looking at the latest piece of off-road kit for gamekeepers. And with the fallow doe season drawing to a close at the end of March, we're out with a stalker in Sussex. So you think you're pretty sporting. You reckon you can handle a horse, a rod and a gun with the best of them. Now meet the Symes girls. I'm Harriet. I'm Amy. I'm Laura. They're 13-year-old triplets who hunt at the front of the corn and long after most of the field has gone home. They fish, they stalk, they're learning to shoot and if there's a rural sport or pastime, they're into it. They are absolutely exhausting. Here's the keeper who's teaching them how to shoot. Typical girls are a bit on the noisy side, but, uh, yeah, but uh, no, they're, they're very good and they're, they're controllable, so I'm happy with that. Here's their mum. It's probably the most enjoyment certainly I get out of, um, you know, I can combine my passion of hunting horses and spending time with the kids, so what more could you want to do, really? Field Sports Channel followed them on a morning's hunting into their afternoon shooting lesson and they never stopped. Their mum, Margaret, helps them get ready, drives them to the meet and follows them around all day. We've got three really, really great ponies. Um, we've got uh, Sophie, or Saint Sophie as we call her, who we've had for about four years now. Um, we bought her from Melton Market. She's just been one of the best ponies you could ever wish to own and we will never sell Sophie. Um, then we've got... Um, Oliver, who's Harriet's pony, um, again, a, just a fantastic um, hunting pony. We don't know much about his background, but Harriet's got a real bond with him. And, uh, you know, I think she'll be on him until her legs are dragging along the floor. And then we have Ty, who um, is quite cheeky, really. But yeah, um, when the chips are down and he needs to, to perform, he will do. But can be a little challenging at times. Then it's off to the meet. Now it's Amy getting out first, Harriet second and Laura out third. Or was that Harriet first and Amy second? The corn, the Pidgeley, the Cottesmore, it's the cream of British fox hunting. How can anyone not get excited about hounds arriving, eager for the off? The triplets have colour-coded back protectors. That's Harriet in green on Ollie, followed by Laura in black with grey tweed on Ty and Amy in blue on the lovely Sophie, also a grey, although Amy's wearing green tweed. Whew. The best horsemen and women in the country pit their skills against Leicestershire's walls and rails. Members of the world's royal families come here to hunt. We're out with the corn on their Tuesday country around the Charnwood Forest. Now you know that's Harry riding Ollie which means that must be Laura on Ty, so surely that's Amy on Sophie. Here are the girls to talk about their day's hunting. I start by asking Harriet if she feels she's jumped enough jumps. But there was one post in rail which was quite intimidating, like scary. But yeah, I, I ended up jumping it really well, so had a good day. <laughs> um, is that true, Laura? Did she jump that very well? Um, I think one. so, because I nearly <laughs> fell off on that one. Kind of, <laughs> my horse kind of scrambled over the jump. You're very loyal. That's right. That's right. <laughs> very which, honest. Which, which of you is the best jumper? Um, I think we're all about the same. <laughs> you are. I think so. I, I have the jumper. Some might disagree. I think it's more it's more on pony or horse ability, because I'm not. I don't think we mind what high we jump, but it's just if our ponies are capable about doing it. If you know what I mean. And is, is Sophie the best of the of the three of them? Of oh, jumping? No. <laughs> no. Well then, Oli yes. <laughs> Oliver, Sophie doesn't jump very high. Oliver's not very careful, and then Ty's just like a dope. <laughs> no way. Sophie would be the safest to ride. Yeah. Out of them three, I think we can all agree on that one. <laughs> yeah, it went really well. It was actually. a really organised day, especially the meet. I really like the place where it was. And the countryside was really nice. Yeah, especially um, on top of the hill. <laughs> it started snowing. <laughs> the corn has an active pony club and the triplets are all members. 
Pony Club members are always welcome at Corn Meats. As members, they are entitled to a special subscription at a cap of just £20. The Corn Hunt encourages its Pony Club members who hunt to do their hunting certificate so that they have a sound knowledge of the sport. It also asks them to help out at hunt functions such as selling race cards at the point to point. But the main fun is the hunting itself. You can find out more at www.cornhunt.co.uk We are of course hunting within the law and we are of course looking forward to repeal. The triplets have a reputation for jumping anything. So we were offered a little um, 11 hands high pony uh, which we gratefully accepted and um, he did turn out to be an awesome hunter but with a lot of attitude and uh, one day we were out hunting and we got to the river crossing which they're supposed to walk down and walk through. Only Jasper decided he could actually jump the whole river, much to Laura's horror, um, as he landed halfway in the middle of it and submerged himself and Laura when she was about eight. So uh, she's been riding difficult ponies for quite some time. <laughs> It sounds like they've had a great morning, as Amy explains. Laura went and tied knocked his front leg, and then Ollie went and he jumped it, then I went, and then the, the whipper in after me fell off. And then and then about five minutes later, the rest of the hunt yeah, came. Thank God I had these like nails in, because I came flat out around this corner, I couldn't stop, but his back leg slipped, but his front stayed up. I got so scared. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mom, so after that um, post and rail, it was only us and Kim left. I was like, we're just like waiting. Kim and Sam. Sam's and Kim. It's so funny. I never thought it was very good though. I almost fell off. I almost fell off. Charlotte is their long suffering elder sister. Which of them's the best rider? Um, I'd have to agree that Laura is probably. Um, yeah, Laura's probably the best rider. She's just more confident. Is this going to cause arguments later on? I hope not, because they argue enough. Then it's time to pack the ponies into the lorry and go to a nearby estate where the girls enjoy beating during the shooting season and where the gamekeeper is teaching them to shoot. Now we're having to go at some shooting, yes, and I'm not worried about them hitting too much as long as they're safe and they're enjoying it and that's what it's all about. We're being like, we haven't shooted like regularly, but we do it every now and again. <laughs> we do. And, um, <laughs> We kind of watch our dad and people when he does it, and he takes us stalking yeah, and places. But I've only ever been um, twice up in Scotland, but I've never been around here. But I think Amy or Harriet have been. Yeah. A when we go more times. shooting with our dad, we could, like go around carrying his guns for him and like picking up the pheasants and stuff with my doggy. So crucially, which of you is the best shot? Me. <laughs> not she me. only sees not that because me. she's shot three and I've shot two but mine are always closer. <laughs> I shot the most today and actually I got four. And I shot none. Now two of you are right-handed. <laughs> which, which, which two are right-handed? Me and Laura. Okay, so and the left-handed is yes. more difficult, isn't it? Because the, the gun starts the other way. So that's I hope to say so. How about them? Do you think they're, they're going to turn into good shooters? Um, I hope so, you know, so they can come out shooting with us all. They, they like to go out beating and... Um, picking up the birds and stuff for dad so yeah they're quite a they're quite a pack they, 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 they remind me a little bit of a kind of small pack <laughs> of hounds or something like that you know. uh, is, is, is that how they are they a bit of a, a team when they're out hunting like that um yeah they tend to stick together when they're out hunting and um, yeah we all we all actually stay like relatively close unless of course i'm getting run off with all of them stopped or fallen off you know <laughs> Are you good at stopping and picking them up, or do you leave them? Um, no, I'm good at getting run off with. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and when you get to when you go to uh, something to jump, do you do you get competitive? You fall. Um yeah, it's always I want to go first. No no stop, let me go first. And Laura always ends up going first because her pony's a bit of an idiot really, <laughs> and tends to jump in front of everybody else. <laughs> you think the pony with the sharpest elbows? Yeah. Um, and do you think the same thing is going to happen with your shooting over time as well? Um, I hope not because I like being the only one that shoots. <laughs> it's nice having something that I do and that they don't all do as well. So You're getting the invitations at the moment. You, you, yeah. You've been pheasant shooting. Yeah, I've been um, twice now. Like, um, yeah, two young guns day and that was fun. <laughs> it's going to be maddening to have to share that, isn't it? Yes, definitely. <laughs> are you, are you going to get your own shotgun first? 
Um, yeah, I've got my stepmum's old one at the moment, but um, I might get my own one day. Let's leave the last word to their mum. And how do you match the character of each daughter with the character of each <laughs> family? Do, 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 you, do you do that? We do a little bit. I mean, we always say that Ollie's a little bit odd because he is a bit odd. He's got a few little funny habits and, um, you know, Harriet occasionally can be a little bit odd as well. So <laughs> compulsive behaviour disorder and things like that. We've both got it. Bipolar. Yeah, bipolar, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that, yeah. yeah definitely. Um, and uh, St. Sophie, obviously. Is... St. Sophie, well, you know. Your sainted daughter. My sainted daughter Amy, who isn't always sainted, it has to be said, so that's probably a bit of a mismatch at the end of the day. And then, uh, then uh, characterful but slightly barging Ty. Yes, I mean, I suppose you could you could quite relate Laura to Ty in a way. You know, she's the biggest of the triplets, and Ty's certainly the chunkiest of the ponies. Do we, do we admit at this point that they're all standing behind the camera looking at you? Yeah, you? <laughs> so I can't say too much. <laughs> Morning, James. How are you? Morning. Good, Good to see you. How are you doing? All right. All right. Good stuff. Ready then? Yep. Right. Today, sporting shooter editor James Marchington is meeting top British shot Andy Pye at the estate he manages in Berkshire. Andy is declaring open season on the woodies today. He has guns all over the 7,000 acre estate, making sure that thousands of birds don't leave his chosen spot only to settle on a neighbouring field. You get so many people who see sort of 50, 60 birds on a field and go out and you know, shoot five or six. Well, you know, the key is let them build big numbers and you'll kill big bags. We see thousands on the way in and Andy is keen to get the hide up. Yeah, please James, I just want to put this one round first. I can. I do, yeah. I've got some real tree nets in there, um, which are very good. This is an old one, it's got a lot of holes in that in, but... I always shoot sitting down, so I like the front of the hide is to be just so I'm sat, just so I can just about, you know, if I sit up like that, I can just about see over. Right, right. And the sides are like high. Keep the sides nice and tall. Yeah, I thought they were tall, yeah. Yeah. That way, anything coming up the side can't look in at you. Right. And he doesn't believe in covering his head and face, but the camo netting works well concealing the hide. With that done, he now sorts out the pattern. All I, tend, all I normally do, James, is literally just stand back and throw the birds where you want them. You can see better then. I think, you know, you can start building up areas. But what I want to do is I want to sort of curl that flank round, big open channel through the middle here, and then a few more birds this side. And then obviously the birds that we shoot, the pigeons coming over here now, look. Uh, we just keep adding to the decoy pattern. There's even a few antiques playing their part today. You made that yourself? Yeah. It's, it's carved out of this wood. Yeah? yeah, three pieces of wood. Because 40 years ago, we didn't have these. No. No. That's where you've come from. And even I'd, those are looking a bit old hat now. That is one of the original well, these rubber uh, jobs. Jane's decoys. Yeah. That one's 40 years old and this is the original flexi coys, oh, yeah, which yeah. are fantastic. One of the best bits of advice given today is if the birds aren't coming, to change position. Which we do a number of times and thankfully we start getting some results. As Andy pops out to clean up the pattern, he shows how easy it is to make a floater with what's to hand. Put a point on the end of the hazel stick, come straight up through the back, straight into the head, lock him on, and then cut yourself another stick which will go through the breast. But before you push it through the breast, what you want to do is, once I can find my knife, Let's just cut these off fairly flat and push it through, grab the wings, pull the wings back, 
push it tight under the wing, straight through, like that. All you're going to do then is just notch both ends, just cut a little notch, move it with the knife, just so that all that's going to do then is just stick one of the flight feathers just down through like that and it'll hold the wing in position. Same on the other side. Notch it down. That just pulls up tight under there. And there you have it, your own your own floater. On a windy day sometimes what I'd normally do is just tie the legs to the stick and that just stops it from twisting in the wind. Well, on some days, you know, I've had 10 or 15 of them out. Like, especially when if you're shooting on corn and stuff like that, and just set them all at different heights. That's all I do, just have him like that. And just push him in, and they can work really well. With the damage being done by these birds, Andy sees days like this as vital pest control. The pigeons aren't playing ball today. However, those that do come within range, and those that mere mortals wouldn't even raise the barrel for, are dispensed with speed and accuracy. We decide to up sticks again and head into the beech wood. The idea is to intercept them as they head into roost. Again, there are only a few chances. Incredibly, the bag is about 80 birds, mainly thanks to some sharp shooting by Andy and Alfie. If you want to learn more about building those hides and building up those bags, we at Field Sports Channel, with James, will soon be releasing a pigeon shooting DVD with all the expert advice you could ask for. The showroom at Adrenaline ATV in the West Midlands is full of toys. Each one is capable of blistering acceleration and turning heads. But one of their bits of kit could soon be transforming the lives of gamekeepers, deer stalkers and farmers all across the country. The Polaris Razor is half all-terrain vehicle, half rally car. And it's the sort of creation that will see Balmoral twinned with Brands Hatch. When most people think about quads and ATVs, they think about machines like this. Think about ride on mowers, they think about green keepers with their little gaiters and, and what have you, but what they probably don't think about is having fun. But that's about to change. Over here, we've got an unbelievable version of a quad. This is the Can Am Outlander, and as you can see, it's a serious bit of kit. It's got a winch down the front here, that's standard fit. It's got power assisted steering to take the weight off your hands, nice, comfy padded seats. It's a business, but that's only the appetizer. The main event is this awesome Polaris Razor S. These things are all the rage in America, but they're just starting to catch on over here, and it's got a few tricks up its sleeve, such as side-by-side -side seating position, it's got a steering wheel and normal pedals like a car, it's even got indicator stalks here. But being a Polaris, it's got functionality too. You can get the winch for this, you can get a hard top, you can get a windscreen, windscreen wipers, you can even get gun racks for the back. It could just be the ultimate shooting vehicle. Of course, it would be rude not to put the Polaris to the test. So we leave the rest of the Adrenaline ATV team prepping all the racing quads and the incredible looking Can-Am Spider. Back to the Polaris Razors which Andrew has kindly offered to show off at a track they use just a few miles away from base. So why is this vehicle taking the state by storm? This is a new development because yeah, I haven't sure. seen anything like this before yeah. in the UK. I mean in the US they always are generally a year in front of us with regards to vehicles like this and this is now one of the most popular vehicles in the US in the off-road. Form. So that trend has now moved over the Atlantic and is here in the UK. So we're seeing a big increase in interest in the Razor and um, yeah, this is why we're here today, to give you a taste of it. Right, I mean you've driven sports cars, you've driven all sorts of quads. How do you rate the, uh, the RZR in terms of fun? Fun per pound, you will not find anything better than this machine. It gives you everything that a rally car would give you, but at an economical price. I can't say enough about it, it's just so much fun. 
and, and you say, you know, economical price, so to get a racing car, you're talking tens and tens of thousands of pounds. How much is it going to cost to get something like this? Road legal version of the Polaris RZRS, which comes with all the aftermarket suspension, Fox suspension, is £14,000. £14,000? Yeah. So, for much less than you could buy a 4x4, yeah, basically. You can yes. get something like this. You can get this, and you've got so much, you know, you can go up the side of a mountain, down a dual carriageway, or round a rally track. Okay. There's no other vehicle made that you can do that with. And obviously, you, you guys also specialise in selling the Polaris Ranger, which, you know, a lot of gamekeepers will be familiar with. Could you theoretically get the similar equipment for this? So, if you wanted to use this as a practical vehicle, but also as a fun vehicle, you can get the gun racks and, and make it yeah, a bit user friendly. I mean, we have a lot of customers that will use this as a fun vehicle. It already comes with a tow bar bracket mounted on it, so all you can do is slide the tow bar in so you can pull a game feeder. You can have gun racks, lighting mounts, you name it, full cabs. So really, it's a fun stroke work vehicle, um, which sits in alongside their Ranger utility van. Right, we've heard how fantastic this UTV is. Now it's time to get muddy. Being chauffeured by Brett from California, a professional quad racer who swore he'd never be seen dead in something like this. You cannot believe how this thing gets around. I mean, obviously, um, from the passenger's point of view, you, all I have to do is grip onto the sissy bar. But some of the inclines you've seen, they're thick mud and it just scampers up. No trouble. I and mean, we've been two wheel drive for most of the way around, not even in four wheel drive. And it just even over the big old bumps with a heavy bloke like me, it just soaks it up. It seriously feels as if you could get anywhere in it. So, after tearing up the track for 20 minutes, it's my chance to get behind the wheel. I'll be under the watchful eye of Andrew, who also races these awesome machines at national level. Okay, so if you keep your foot on the brake and straight back into high. That's it, at the moment we're in, uh, we're in two wheel drive. Yep. So, We'll leave it in two wheel drive and have some fun. Okay, it's CVT transmission, all I have to do is mash the accelerator pedal. You've got it. Okay, which way are we going? Right, if we go up here, do a U-turn and we'll head back and join the course at the uh, start finish line. Okay. I'm just, just going to make sure I can see something out of these. Okay. So right. just accelerate and go. That's it. Perfect. And then straight back on the track again. And that's it, you got it. Now remember getting the rhythm. Got it. Just keep going. Nah, just keep going. It'll keep soaking it up. Just keep going. Go through the middle here. Another way you can just oh, just go straight through. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And there you go. Well, that is quite simply the most fun you can possibly have on four wheels. I've been lucky enough to test Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Bentleys, Aston Martins, and pretty much every exotic car costing as much as your average house. This thing is as much fun, if not more, than any of those things. It is absolutely unreal. You can just jump in it, put your foot down, and off you go. It soaks up the most incredible bumps. It will wade through knee deep water, it'll send spray flying, mud flying, it just keeps going and all you do is sit here steering the steering wheel, keeping your foot down and laughing like an idiot. I tell you, if I had one of these on my chute, the farm would never have to play another field again because I'll be doing it for him in this. You could cover twice as much ground rabbit shooting because you'd never want to get out of the vehicle. It is awesome. So back to plowing up that field and thank goodness for the overalls, I am covered from head to toe. And the Polaris looks like it could do with a good wash too. So it's time to say goodbye to the Midlands and the best four wheel fun for under 15 grand. 
But will we really start seeing them ferry people, dogs, guns and birds around on our sheets? It all depends on how much fun you can cope with in one day. Roy's been playing with eagles all day, but now his attention is well and truly on making a meal of this evening. Literally. We've got um, an event coming up on Sunday, uh, which is a, a kill it, cook it, eat it event. And uh, we need to, uh, need to have a, uh, a deer or a carcass for uh, butchery and for cooking for Sunday. So we need to uh, get our backsides out there and hopefully get a few deer in the larders. Do you know what's in the bag already? Sorry? What's in the bag already, do you know? Uh, we've got half a rabbit in the bag at the moment, but not a lot else. So we've, uh, yeah, we better hurry whilst we've still got the light and uh, make the most of it. He's after a fallow doe or two. But with light fading and pressure from Rob, the estate manager, to serve up something special, he has to pull out all the stops. He's brought along two fellow stalkers and he places them in some hot spots. They're coming in off the horse paddocks and coming back into here at the evening. So okay. get yourself tucked up here somewhere. Any, and spe any special place? No, wherever you There's a load of brambles just down there, yeah. so you should be able to tuck yourself up and keep an eye. He's got a John Deere Gator on loan. And so far, so good. It's really, really good. I've, uh, I've been very impressed with it. It's, I mean, coping with, uh, with everything that I've put through it perfectly so far. We'll see how she does in Scotland on the mountains. Roy knows this estate like the back of his hand and takes us to the edge of a clearing at the bottom of the valley. Where we are here at the moment, we're at last light. And the deer all bed down in the thick cover of the wood just through here. So just, just as the light is fading, they're just coming out and feeding back into the fields. They tend to be leaving it bright until the last light because we've obviously got a lot of pressure from dog walkers here. So they wait until everything's quiet down to the dog walkers and start to trickle through. So we've just got our fingers crossed that they come across before we lose the light. Just as we're about to give up, two does leave the cover of the wood and start feeding. Roy waits until he gets a clean shot Relief all round, but he still has to retrieve it. Well, I mean, luckily it, uh, it worked the way we wanted it to. We couldn't have got it any, uh, any closer to, to losing the light there. And, uh, and just as we were losing the light, luckily the, uh, we had two does just, uh, just came out. Um, they were probably, I don't know, 70, 80 yards away. And initially I couldn't take the shot because we, we didn't have a shot. She, was, uh, she had her head down and was feeding. And, um, just as uh, I was about to give up hope of the, uh, the light going, she presented us with a take-all shot and away she went. So It is a great relief, yes. This is, uh, otherwise we would have been very, very stuffed. We would have had to pop to Tesco's on Sunday to get a little bit of venison. <laughs> Once the Gralic is complete, we retrace our steps. The gator goes first and it seems to be far more sure-footed than Roy's friend. So, a good evening's work, and thankfully, there's a bit more than rabbit on the menu. This programme is back in two weeks' time. Next week, it's shooting politics. <laughs>